Hi, everyone. I am Morgan Boykin, and I'm our community and volunteer coordinator here at SC Codes. So I work very closely with our mentors like Chris, um, who are on our platform and share um, either by mentoring, so mentoring our learners um, through our coursework and through our platform, or sharing um, special topics like we're doing today. So we're really excited to have um, Chris with us, who is an awesome new mentor, um, who has a wealth of knowledge to share um, with our military folks. And I'll pause there and just give another um, special thank you to all of you who have served in our military or are currently serving in our military from SC Codes. So appreciate your service and are thankful for you every day. But particularly, I think in July, we really pause and think about um, that sacrifice and that service. So I think this is a really fitting, um, really fitting content to have um, right now. So um, just a couple of um, housekeeping things before we get started. Um, so we are really hoping this is a very interactive conversation. So those of you on uh, Facebook or Instagram, Instagram, Facebook or YouTube, feel free to jump in and chat with us as well. Um, feel free to come off of mute um, for any questions that you uh, have, but if not, we'd love for you to stay on mute just in case you have like I do, maybe a screaming child who may run by at any moment. Um, so mute on as much as possible, cameras on if you would like to engage with us that way as well so we can see your face and interact. Um, Chris has, has made it um, very clear that he is really looking forward to it being a conversation, so please feel free to let that um, conversa conversation flow there. A little bit about SC Codes for those of you who don't know, and I, I think Chris may talk about it a little bit as well. Um, we are a free platform for South Carolina residents to gain coding skills. So whether you are totally new to software development, looking to um, skill up a bit, or just kind of exploring what opportunities may be available in the world of software development, we have courses on our platform, mentors on our platform and a community of support for you to be able to dive into that a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna throw some information in the chat about SC Codes as well. Um, feel free to reach out to me throughout or after our session today with more information on um, SC Codes and particularly how to um, gain a mentor through SC Codes. And with that, I will turn it over to our speaker for the day who I am uh, have really enjoyed getting to know and work with um, for the past couple of weeks. So Chris um, is a current software developer, obviously a um, military service member, former military service, service member in the Coast Guard, um, and just has a real passion for helping people with that um, or with the transition of from military service to a tech career. And it's obviously done extremely well and really is a, a guide for um, you all and all of us on how to tackle this conversation and all of the um, different areas that we can explore within it. So I will turn it over to Chris now who, um, oh yes, <laughs> again, thank you to everyone who has shared and especially those who are out um, watching us on other platforms as well. Um, so I'll turn it over to Chris. If you have any questions, please feel free again to raise your hand, come off mute, and we're looking forward to chatting with you a little bit more. Thanks so much for coming and being a part of our very first um, military transition event. All right. Thank you, Morgan, and uh, for, for probably a far too kind introduction. And uh, like Morgan said, uh, really excited to be here today. And um, you know, not a lot of folks on Zoom, uh, certainly, uh, you know, come off mute and ask questions uh, as we go. Uh, I, I don't know everyone's background or where they are. Uh, I'll get to sort of what I was targeting for this brief and, you know, um, uh, you know, but feel free to chime in if you hear something and you, you know, you have a question, a, a term, obviously tech is sort of is filled with that, right? There's, there's lots of different contexts and, um, you know, uh, just go ahead and jump in and ask questions or, um, you know, Conversely, if you've got some experience that maybe differs than what I have, um, you know, I, I welcome that feedback too. So um, get started. I, I called this brief Boots to Nerd. I mean nerd in the most uh, flattering sense of the word, uh, because I think it's a really powerful thing to be a nerd and to be someone who uh, is into software, um, because it is such a creative en endeavor. And uh, I think, especially in this day and age, um, you know, there, there's very few industries that aren't, I can't think of any industries, right? Uh, not touched by software. So uh, it's really important to be someone who understands software, understands the value of it, 
And I think one of the best ways to do that is to uh, is to actually be pretty hands on and and, sort, and write code. So uh, so this is my very opinionated guide on transitioning from the military to a career in software. So uh, this is me. Um, and uh, Morgan already gave a, a, a little bio, but I put some links here. Uh, my company, that idea to dev, I would love to tell you that, hey, you know, once you're done with uh, some of your studies and you know you've you've learned to code, uh, I will hire you maybe one day. But that company right now is just me. So I'm a freelance software developer. Uh, I work independently, uh, but set up my own uh, small LLC to sort of do my work under. Um, and then my LinkedIn profile, which I encourage uh, anyone watching this brief um, when we're done, uh, you know, certainly, uh, certainly connect with me and just let me know in the comments that, uh, that you were here for the brief. So um, I would love to connect with you. And, um, you know, as uh, any good software developer, one of, one of my, uh, and I'll talk about this later in the brief, one of the things that I think uh, should always sort of be your, you know, a calling card as well is kind of your profile and that is really your GitHub profile, right? Because uh, that's a pretty pretty popular platform for sharing code, uh, open source code and, and closed source as well. Um, not necessarily out there sharing, but uh, teams tend to work that way. So always a, always a good, good uh, calling card to have. And then uh, my company website, which is not much to look at right now. I've been independent for all of about three weeks. Uh, it needs some work, but uh, on that, you can actually link to my calendar uh, and schedule some time to uh, to connect up with me if you if you want to chat in person. So Morgan mentioned I'm a Coast Guard person. Uh, way back in 1994, I graduated from Coast Guard Academy. Uh, that's a uh, Federal Service Academy in New London, Connecticut, uh, where they uh, we call it the factory because it just kind of cranks out Coast Guard officers uh, for the Coast Guard. Uh, and I'm I was a government major, so I was not a comp sci degree. Um, and I think that that should be Kind of something that you maybe take note of and just go, hey, you know, uh, lots of people get into software, especially now. Um, I, I think maybe uh, at, at one point and probably early on when I was making the transition, it, it was a bit uh, tough to, to transition in. But I think it's it's probably more the uh, the, the rule now than the exception that you that uh, software developers come from all sorts of backgrounds and all sorts of degrees or no degree for that matter. So. Um, I served a total of nine years on active Coast Guard service. Uh, that was sort of a, a, a little bit of a broken service. I had, um, I, when I graduated the academy, I incurred a five-year uh, obligation like uh, all graduates do. And so uh, my first my first tour was uh, at sea at, at, on a buoy tender, the least glamorous mis mission in the Coast Guard, but a really awesome one. As a as a young junior officer, because you know lots of lots of folks go to um, to larger Coast Guard cutters, or if you graduate, let's say from the Naval Academy, you may go shipboard, and you may find yourself uh, you know doing patrols out in the ocean and really not seeing a lot of contacts or not doing a lot of things. But when you're on a buoy tender, you tend to work right alongside shoal water, uh, and uh, you know so it's 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 somewhat hazardous in terms of like you could easily run the ship aground i only did that once and uh you know it, it was we weren't there very long so it was okay um and uh we we i'd prefer to say it wasn't really running into ground it was really just touching bottom momentarily so um so buoy tender and it was also it was here in charleston and that's where i really fell in love with charleston south carolina uh, first introduced here, you know, I'd never seen it uh, until I'd come down as a, as a junior officer and just loved it. Um, and then I mentioned it was kind of a broken career. I, I left after my five-year obligation, uh, my initial academy obligation, but then I joined the reserves uh, before September 11th, but really just in time to get recalled after the attacks of September 11th. So then when I came back on, it was a very different, uh, very different time, and, and uh, I, I wasn't so much needed shipboard and it had been a little while since I'd been on ships. Um, so I recalled to, act, recalled to active duty down in Houston, Texas, helped get the um, uh, port security mission sort of reinvigorated on the Houston ship channel. Um, and then uh, and then actually took an active duty contract to sort of come back on for a couple of years. Uh, and I transitioned to the Washington DC area where I did a lot of uh, Coast Guard intelligence uh, we had always had Coast Guard Intel as a mission in the Coast Guard, um, but it was kind of law enforcement focus, uh, stopping drug uh, runners and all that. But I was on the side that worked with a lot more of the 
sort of the national security mission. So other federal agencies that were doing intel and making sure that uh, that the Coast Guard was also feeding intel into that and and uh, uh, got into um, sort of the soft skills side of software development. Um, was leading a couple of projects. Wasn't writing code, but was as a uh, as a project manager, sort of leading projects, uh, software related projects. Um, I transitioned out uh, again from the Coast Guard, and then, um, you know, some total, I've got about 18 uh, years of um, experience in the software industry. Uh, with the Coast Guard background, um, you know, a lot of that meant sort of defense contracting. It was very easy when I left uh, um, the Intel side in Washington, D.C. with a security clearance and uh, a technology background, even if it wasn't a lot of hands-on coding. Uh, I was able to, um, you know, to, to transition into defense contracting, and then, but I, then I did get into uh, to hands-on coding, uh, and then um, since then I've had experience with startups um, and in sort of middle-sized uh, companies, um, and and now sort of at the smallest company, uh, a company of one, right? But uh, but I've been been a part of companies that um, I was the only developer uh, on. Uh, built teams, and then um, was a part of a, a, a acquisition where a larger company bought our smaller company, and really that that sort of spurred that interest. That wow, there you know, I, I love the creative side. I love that you know, I love coding. I love solving problems, but at the same time, you know, you can really uh, deliver something of value that 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 takes off. And if other people see that value, uh, and other companies do, they're often willing willing to pay. So it's. Um, you know, it's it, it can be a can be a really good and exciting sort of field to to be in. I, I I'm biased. I really love it. So, um, and then uh, target audience for this brief. Um, you know, I was really you know thinking about this in terms of like wanting to to share some some of the things I've learned along the way that I think might uh, help, particularly transitioning servicemen and women and their families if they're making that uh, leap into software. But really, a lot of this is just gen general purpose, um, you know, my opinionated ideas about, um, you know, uh, why you should write code, why you should learn to write software. Uh, and then just really anyone willing to, willing to get their hands dirty by doing that, not, not dirty, but willing to, to be hands-on in writing code. I'm, you can do lots of things in software that don't necessitate you uh, uh, writing it right, but you understand the value of software. But I think you have such a more such more an appreciation for it uh, if you've actually struggled through some some uh, software and 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 writing code. So, um, and I, I think you you truly get the value of it and and what it can do to save time, um, solve problems that would otherwise um, be difficult to solve or, or really time consuming for a person to work through. Uh, and then here's a, uh, yeah, maybe I'm pushing it on this slide, but have, if you've ever heard of uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, sort of the basic ideas, you know, you start at the bottom of the pyramid, right? And you have to meet those basic needs first, but, you know, as you meet those, you can sort of move on to that next level. Uh, and so certainly learning the code is a great thing and getting into software is a great thing because it's an exciting industry. And as far as meeting your basic needs, you know, there's just lots of there's lots of demand for people who um, can write software and the pay uh, is good so you know that's uh, that that's a that's a powerful thing and that's a there's nothing wrong with that as being with that as being your sort of your primary reason to get into it but I think as once you meet those basic needs you realize there's so many other things that are that are really satisfying about this career so as you move up that you know hierarchy of needs, you know, you probably want to do interesting work, right? Um, and so for, as far as meeting psychological needs, I think the work can be challenging. Uh, let's see, it looks like we've got someone else joining. Um, Morgan, do you mind hitting in mint on that? I have to, okay, thank you. Um, you know, as far as meeting psychological needs, you know, it's a it's a challenging career. It engages your mind. And and then unless, I mean, even, even myself as a solo developer, uh, I have to work with people, right? I work with other with, with other software developers on the companies that I'm servicing, uh, but then I work with customers. So you're almost never really achieving something unless you're working with a team. You know, the people that have the problem or other people that are trying to solve the problem. So, um, so I think that's fulfilling as well. And then at sort of that top of that pyramid, um, you kind of have the self 
self-fulfillment sort of needs. Um, you know, with software, you can start, you truly can start with nothing, but, um, you know, knowing that you need to solve a problem. And it is a creative exercise as much as it often, I think in, you know, in television and, you know, this, the standard way we think about nerds or geeks or what have you is, you know, uh, very math oriented, which is, which is great, right? But that's not all software development. I'd say as, uh, as much as anything, it's, it's really a, a creative endeavor and thinking out of the box when you're given a problem to solve and realizing you know, what tools are in your kit and what you're able to do uh, as a software developer to, to solve some of those problems. So it's, it's, such a, it's a creative endeavor and you know, can be very self-fulfilling uh, in that regard. And then you know, in many cases, you're solving problems that you know, the world needs, the world needs solve. So. Um, so that was kind of why I think uh, folks transitioning out of the military, um, you know, might be interested in software. But I actually think that uh, in one of the things that I'd expressed to Morgan when I said I was really excited about uh, doing this talk was, you know, I think software companies need us too. Um, and I think military, and I, I, I don't say this, um, I don't say this lightly, like I, I think um, we bring a certain element that is really valuable um, to any company or any industry that we're a part of. Um, you know, I think that 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 folks like us are willing to be sort of mission focused. You know, whether it's you know uh, servicing an aid to navigation like I did back in the Coast Guard, right, or or uh, putting together an intelligence report that's going to brief senior decision makers or folks conducting an operation or being you know the boots on the ground. Um, you, you know, um, conducting a mission or conducting an operation. I think the idea that, you know, there's an objective to, to achieve um, makes us really driven, right? Uh, oftentimes you don't know exactly how you're going to do it. You have the basic parameters of, uh, I need to solve this problem, but, you know, you're, you're pretty determined to solve it. So skills gaps, things like that, you kind of work through and you just go solve it, and and I found that to be a real strength as I've as I've been in part of the, the in, in working at, at software companies, um, and then had, you know right along with that is um, team first, right? When you have a team motivated behind that one mission, uh, you kind of put yourself sometimes sometimes second, right? What what is it that I can do to to help my team move along and and uh, you know accomplish that mission? I think. Uh, you know, those are those are good selfless ideals that a lot of us bring to the table um, in leadership. And, and that can be both being a good follower and knowing how to how to take direction. But then also, hey, when there's when there's a lack of clarity, uh, I often find myself drawn to step in and say, well, you know, I'm going to communicate to you. Here's what I think we ought to do, and then we're going to go that direction, right? Until until there's some reason why we shouldn't. And and I think that's a that that's something that a lot of military folks, um, I, I believe, uh, also also have. And then and then uh, the the idea of professionalism that. Um, Software is a great casual work environment. I, I mean, the, I'm wearing a collared shirt is, a, is an aberration, right? I'm almost always in a t-shirt and that's great. And, I and I've been in office environments where that's totally encouraged too. And, um, but, you know, but you still, you conduct yourself professionally uh, and uh, you, know, you, uh, you build up your team. So uh, I think there's a, for those reasons and probably many others, I could go on and on about why I think even if not all software companies realize it, they really do need uh, uh, folks that have that military background and that service-oriented background. So, and then I'm gonna get into what I think is the more interesting part is how I think you should do it. Um, and it's totally opinionated. Um, this, this could, I could go on and on about this, but I, you know, we'll hit some of those things uh, some of the the resources that I found that I that um, I think are maybe not as widely known, uh, and you know they're they're what I found to be things that are in demand. Uh, you know skills that are in demand, and there's there's a bazillion ways to to learn this, to to learn software, to come about being a part of the industry, um, and so this is one way, uh, and it's a it's completely opinionated, but it's it is opinion form based on you know a few years and a few years in the industry. Um, but that said, um, you know I, I have to go. I have to make sure that you know that 
uh, opinion is the medium between knowledge and ignorance, right? Um, I know some things, uh, but there's a whole ton of things that I don't know, and there's other experiences out there beside mine. Um, so, you know, I've tried to make sure that you, you know some of my background, and I'll, I'll say it again as we sort of get into some of the things that, that I found to be helpful. Um, but, but know that there's, there's certainly other ways. Um, you know, one of the things I don't even cover is, um, you know, there are many boot, when I say boot camps, non, in the non-military context, right, software coding boot camps or code schools. Um, I, didn't, I did not really go through one of those, but um, I, I know lots of people have done that and found that to be a really effective way to learn this. But most of what we're going to cover are just uh, tools, resources that are free that I think, um, you know, will help you out a lot. Um, and then, um, you know, kind of the, the flip side of that is I'll, I'm just going to give some advice, but, you know, you know, you, you can completely blow it off. And sometimes the experience is really a great teacher too. Right. So, um, but, but some of these things I wish, um, or some of these tools, some of these resources, I, you know, they weren't all around when I started this journey, started my journey, but, um, I think, uh, to have someone who had had, you know, approaching 20 years of experience to sort of say, hey, you know, in my, in my opinionated view, try, try this, try this, try this, you know, um, I was very lucky and fortunate um, and, and found some good mentors. Um, but I think it probably took a lot longer to, to get there and to get um, to the point that I am, um, that, that maybe some of something like this would have would have helped. So and so now we're jumping into the opinionated, like, here are some resources and links that I think are um, are valuable to uh, to know about. Morgan already and Morgan, you know, SC Codes is sponsoring this, um, but it's an organization with that provides free programming courses for all of South for all South Carolinians, uh, and the courses are great. And I've identified one that I think is that I would totally recommend. Well, there are three courses: one uh, certification pathway, the front end certification pathway, um, and I think that's a good place to start. Right, is being a front end developer, and I'll talk about that in a little bit when we talk about one of the tools, because, you know, the web is sort of the entry into most of the software that we tend to use these days, right? Um, you know, there, there's lots, you, you, could, you could write code and you could program and never write a web application, but I think kind of fundamentally, you, you really should start with that, right? Um, because that is the medium that we get a lot of our software through is, is the World Wide Web. So uh, front-end certification pathway being a great course, but one of the things that I think makes uh, in the little bit of experience that I have with SC Codes that I think is so awesome is that it's a community, not just the courses, right? That there's, there's mentors willing to uh, help you through those courses if you're having problems, but also just um, it, there, there's, a, there's a Slack channel. And if you, if you don't know what Slack is, you know, it's a, it's a uh, tool for communication, you know, somewhere in between email and instant messaging. Uh, and very pervasive in software. So just the fact that even the community is built around a tool or a product that software developers routinely use at companies, um, you know, you're getting experience in, in really a tool that, that you know, you're, you're going to be expected to have experience with at most software companies that you go work at and that you have access to those mentors um, that are willing to help you out. And then uh, we're not, you know, um, those who may be watching this may not be in South Carolina. And so I wanted to be able to provide, there, there's many of these out there, but uh, resources, free resources that you can use to learn uh, tech skills and software. And so Free Code Camp is one that I found to be really helpful. The, um, the first link is sort of the basic, you know, where you can start, but at that learn link there, that second link, um, there are even certification pathways. Um, and, you know, so front end development, JavaScript, uh, those are really great ones to learn. Uh, there are many others, like if you, if you, once you start this journey and you go, I'm really interested in data science and machine learning um, or, or um, information assurance, you know, um, cybersecurity, those sort of things, there are certification pathways there. So they're great to sort of dive in, learn the whole path, or, and when I say supplement as needed, um, when you get into some, some of the resources that I'm going to point to here in a moment, you know, you, you're going to come across terms or tools or frameworks that, you know, that tutorial is going to gloss over. 
well, you know what, just take a note to yourself, like, hey, I want to go learn more about that, because that sounds like something I need, or I don't, I'm not quite getting enough here on this tutorial, you know, you can go back to free code camp, and you can find out more about that. So, um, and, and then just one caveat that I wanted to put here, don't get bogged down in learning everything. I'm often want to do that, right? Like, um, hey, this, you know, you get there, there are five courses here. Should I go ahead and knock them all out? You don't, you don't have to do that. You're going to be learning the rest of your life and the rest of your career doing this. Um, so sometimes, and maybe some of the things that I'm pointing you to here are probably there. They may be beyond where like a beginner would be, but um, some learners, and, and I found myself to be this way, it, it can be really helpful to you know, stretch, right? And I'm going to learn about something that might be beyond just the entry level. And I'm going to learn, I'm going to learn the entry level along the way. So free code camp can be a great place to go back and like, okay, now I really want to make sure I really understand the thing that I glossed over before. So, but don't get bogged down learning everything. Um, and this is Gatsby is the next thing I want to cover. Uh, and I say, this is front end stuff. And um, again, these are places where you may want to interrupt and say, well, what does that even mean front end? Well, you'll hear that talk. We'll hear, you hear people talk in tech all the time or software all the time about front end and back end. So front end, just think, you know, things that run uh, in the web browser when I'm using a web application, right? I think about that as front end. Uh, and that's exactly where Gatsby sits. Um, and so it's a framework for building websites. Um, and so rather than, but it's a, it's a much more modern way than like, it's okay to start with the super basics of, I wanna hand code HTML, right? And I wanna style it with this other technology called CSS, cascading style sheets. Uh, and I wanna add interactivity to it in the browser with JavaScript. Um, you know, Gatsby sort of bundles all that together and says, it has an opinionated way to go do that and to run that and to actually push it up to a place where you could where you could now host it and you know have a URL that you can access that. So I used uh, Gatsby um, to to generate the you know it it is just a rudimentary site, but like my company site or any other sites that I have to generate and want to quickly get something up there, you know, it doesn't take all day. It takes, you know, an hour, right, to put something really simple together and get it deployed. Uh, and, and so I was, and in software, I'm always kind of looking for that. What's the, you know, wh where can I, you know, maybe skip some of the, skip some of the early levels, but I'm going to get those early levels uh, as I, as I use sort of the, the next, you know, the next level up. Um, and I link to a couple of the tutorials here that I think are good. You get not only information about this tool Gatsby that helps you build websites, but you're, you know, along the way, if you're, if you're entry level and you're just starting out with this, you're going to learn some basic command line skills, uh, GitHub, um, you know, which is a place to store your code. Uh, and I already mentioned that, you know, that's, you know, GitHub, the site is where I like to sort of say, well, here, here's where my code is. If an employer asks or I'm out there looking for a job, you know, um, that can be my portfolio. Of, here's the software I've, I've written. Uh, and then you just get basic web stuff too. Like I said, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you're going to get that as you're, as you're using Gatsby. Visual Studio Code is a, is a uh, development, an integrated development environment. You know, back when I first started, you might be on the command line and you use, uh, you know, uh, just a, a text editor, uh, very rudimentary, but, you know, we're beyond that now. So um, it, it's cool to learn some of that and go, yes, you know, I, I, I can do that. And that was how they used to do it way back. But now, you know, most developers, it's, you know, are, are using something that's a little bit more powerful and helps them really leap ahead on getting more code done faster. So, you know, use the tools at hand. So that was Gatsby. Uh, and then serverless framework is something is a is a uh, tool that I've latched onto uh, that does a lot of really great things for making it easy to deliver backend functionality. So if front end was everything that runs in your browser, um, right, provides the interactivity within your web browser, then backend stuff like actually you know makes the functionality happen you know when you press the button on your on in the browser that sends some form data somewhere 
Well, that somewhere is to the back end, right? Um, to back end code that, that accepts that and then stores it in a database so that the next time that you come back, you can retrieve that, right? And it makes sure that you are who you say you are, right? You provide a username and password, something has to check that and say that is the valid user, right? That's authentication uh, and authorization. And that's what, you know, backend stuff is. Um, and so, you know, in my first bullet's kind of an opinionated one. Um, th there's lots of things to learn. You are probably gonna, going to specialize as you really get into your, your software journey, but it's good to have, a, it, at least in this regard, a well-rounded appreciation for both, you know, to be able to do something on the front end to, to write a web page, but then also be able to deliver the back end that actually does something with that interactivity. I often see these days, um, it, and this is one thing that I, we, I, used, I used to feel like you were a software developer and you were a software developer and you, you wrote for the front end or the back end and it didn't matter. And that still happens. I see a lot more specialization at some of the companies that I've been to where the front end developers never want to sort of do back end stuff and vice versa, back end developers never want to do front end stuff. I think you know when you're starting out, get a full appreciation for this for both front end and back end. Um, and so learn serverless. Uh, and I listed a couple of tutorials here that if you go to that learn link, um, you know, we'll go through those. But again, just like Gatsby, serverless framework's just a tool. It's oriented towards the back end, but you're going to get a lot of stuff on the way to learning serverless framework. And you know, you hear people talk about cloud, right? Um, Way back, we used to we used to stand up servers, and you might even have a server room somewhere where there were computers that you could go touch. Now, almost no one does that, right? Um, Amazon or Microsoft or Google, they're cloud service providers. They make machines that are in their data centers available. Uh, and one of the my favorites is Amazon. So AWS is Amazon Web Services. They're a cloud service provider. You, serverless is all about making it easy to package up that functionality and get it to, to the AWS cloud, right? And it's super cost effective too. Um, the one thing I want to say about, you know, these serverless technologies is, you know, if I were to go buy a, even a low grade server, I might, I might, I might, you know, pay a thousand dollars and I still have to leave it on all the time if I want my website to be available. Um, you know, I can run, I can deploy functions uh, as, as part of the serverless framework, and they, I only pay for those when they actually get executed. So I don't pay in advance. I don't pay $1,000. Um, I, I pay pennies if I pay anything at all, because Amazon has such a generous free tier. You can really experiment with a lot of this stuff and, uh, you know, find that it either, A, doesn't cost you much or doesn't cost you anything. So, and you're using some of the absolute latest technology that is going to be, um, that if you can understand this, you can understand the old way of sort of how we used to do it. So I would recommend skip some of the, skip some of the old way, go right to this, you know, go right to the serverless framework and you're gonna learn enough things along the way that are gonna make you valuable even when you find that you're, you know, applying for a job that's that's not even using serverless framework, right? And you can be an you could be an advocate for finding, hey, the problem you're looking to solve, I actually think you can do it much more inexpensively, and with the scale that you need. Um, so this is something I'm real, I'm super passionate about, and I we're we're still hitting it at a relatively new point. Um, this these uh, these serverless technologies. So can't emphasize enough. Uh, learn this. So um, let's see, moving on. Uh, so I, I think I'm mostly done with sort of hacks and, and or uh, with, with software tools and all like that. But I also wanted to hit on, you know, as you're out there and you're, you know, you're building up your portfolio, you're learning code, I think it should be, you should be thinking about how that is always sort of building up your, your personal brand or your resume, right? And um, you know, way back in the day, I used to dread, you know, if I were going to have to go looking for a job because someone was going to ask me for a Microsoft Word resume. And you know what? I hadn't updated it in five years because, you know, that was the last time I was out there looking for a job. Um, you know, I, I, don't, that, I don't think that happens that much anymore. I haven't been asked for a Microsoft Word copy of my resume in a long time. And I think that's especially true because, you know, I'm in the software industry. Um, 
what I almost always do is just keep my LinkedIn profile as up to date as I as I possibly can. You know, I'm working a current job. You know, I'm going to go ahead and add my current you know position description there and sort of the technologies that I'm using. Um, and and as even as you're just starting your journey and you're doing some of these you know SC code certification uh, pathways or you're going to uh, free code camp. Um, you know, and taking courses there, you know, you're, you're going to finish some of those courses and you're going to get some of these certificates that might not be a, you know, a, a really elaborate certification, but go ahead and get it on your LinkedIn profile anyway in that training section, because you just won't believe the number of, I mean, you almost get too many uh, recruiters reaching out to you because you've got some of the right buzzwords, right, in your LinkedIn profile. But, you know, as that's happening, you're also getting, you um, you're also getting sort of you're learning and you're getting exposed to what are some of the opportunities that are out there. So, um, I, you know, I think it's it's a very different, you know, sort of mindset than it used to be way back. You know, it's really a, and, and I found having left my company very recently set up and having set up my own small company and finding clients that I wanted to, to uh, do uh, consulting work and software development work for. Um, that was key, um, you know, really was keeping my LinkedIn profile up to date. Uh, and as far as resume, like I, I, the screenshot I've shown here of my own profile is, you know, within LinkedIn, um, you can just, there's an option for building your resume. And so it takes all the stuff that you put on your LinkedIn profile, if you've kept that up to date, and it puts it into a pretty nice format, right? That if someone did ask you for a, hey, can you, I get a copy of your resume? you could actually export it as PDF and just say, well, here it is. Um, that's what I almost always do now. I, I don't spend a lot of time and I've, I've rarely found a company or a recruiter that said, you know what, I just don't like that. I want it in you know, a different sort of format. So until they ask you to do that, you know, don't spend all that extra time doing it, you know, just export it out of LinkedIn. Uh, and then I already made the case for Hey, GitHub is is kind of your portfolio, you know, uh, as you're doing software work and as you're doing some of the exercises in things like, you know, the certification pathways. Go ahead and check those into GitHub, right? Um, you know, you're building up your portfolio there, even if it is just stuff that you're just starting to learn. Um, you know, that I, I think that you you know you're building up a little bit of a, you're building up you know sort of your portfolio of work even as you're just start, even as you're just learning and starting out. So. Uh, and then um, I want to talk about some prep hacks. And uh, some of this I recently found as I was actually um, leaving my company and just wanting to see what else was out there. And I, I, I say use Google. I don't mean, I don't necessarily mean go to Google and search for something. I'm actually saying Google as a company has some really cool programs out there. Um, and, and some of which are really oriented towards military. Um, you know, so here you've got this great software company, you know, known as being really, um, even if they're not a startup, they're a bigger company. They try to kind of maintain that, you know, very agile, we move fast, we build really cool products, really cool software products. They are trying to recruit for military folks. So there's this Google VetNet that just finished up um, uh, about, uh, about a month ago, actually just several weeks ago. And I, I believe they do that every year. So you just have to kind of keep an eye on it. Uh, and these are some other Google links that will let you know about the programs, you know, about the programs that Google has. Um, and, and the VetNet program was, it was three days. I, I don't know if they normally do it in person or if they just do this. They probably just do this always virtually, but it was three days worth of, you know, not just Google, but other companies coming and talking about their uh, programs that are oriented towards veterans. And, and some of which were, were not necessarily careers in the software field, but of course it's Google. So many of them were, um, and, and they, they do, they let you even register for uh, uh, like resume sort of reviews, right? So if you have a military oriented resume, oriented resume and it talks about very, you know, military terms like division officer or department head, or, you know, these other things that might not translate uh, readily to the civilian world, they will help. They're, 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 they will help you do that, right? Um, and so, it's just a great resource. I, I went ahead and met with one of the lined up my own opportunity to meet with one of the folks and just 
super nice, was willing to talk about just about anything that I wanted to, but it was, I didn't end up taking him up on the, let me have you review my resume, but he was totally willing to do that. Um, and, um, you know, and, and, and certainly they are also looking for you like uh, as, as a potential candidate too. Uh, but they're also just willing to, they're, they're trying to give back. So, um, so use Google, really, really cool. I, I was surprised to find out how much they had uh, in the way of helping veterans, that even if you're not interested in Google, could be a help with just general resume prep, uh, interviewing, inter interviewing prep, and getting you ready for being out there looking for a job. Uh, and then one of the, uh, this last link here, gun.io, a horribly named website, but if you're familiar with like uh, TopTal or um, some of these marketplaces where, you know, recruiters will list uh, jobs and, and um, candidates will come and apply. That's kind of what gun.io is, except that they're really looking to, they actually do a certain layer of vetting developers on their way into the program, which I think you'll find, I found really helpful because it can, it, you know, there's a, there's a coding test, there's sort of a skills evaluation, there's, you know, uh, again, a little bit of that resume sort of prep, like, um, you know, a, a, even if you're not necessarily going to ever use them, I think it's a great run through of, of vetting yourself and seeing if you're ready to, uh, to apply with no real risk, right? Uh, and, and it's mostly senior folks, but I'd say go ahead and stretch and then uh, you know, see what feedback that you get. And then it can always be an option for you again later. Uh, and then what a lot of what you'll find a lot of software folks do is, you know, it, you know, they may they may work their normal job, but if they're looking for like some other side interesting work and side projects, I find that a lot of software developers do that. Uh, Gun.io has some of those available too. So, uh, and it has a really slick, great interface. So another place I'd sort of recommend. Uh, and then last, I, I think lastly here, I look ahead at my slides, but uh, you know, when you're actually out there and you're, you're searching, um, you know, use your network. I've, I've always found that to be uh, super helpful. Probably my, my last, you know, four or five changes have all been sort of, um, or career changes or job changes. Have all been sort of you know natural. It's been because I I had a contact who went somewhere and they said, hey, we're looking for this, you know, and it, it just it sort of naturally occurs like later on in your career more so than you know, hey, I'm out there interviewing, you know, uh, leverage your network. And I say don't forget about sccodes.org because in on that and I know that's where Morgan was going to say like I I see on that Slack channel all the time. I'll see Katie posting about um, you know, these positions, some are internship opportunities available in Charleston or Greenville. And um, you, you know, and, and even like there's a site that she, uh, I'll often see her post in that's, um, I think it's like uh, software careers with no comp sci degree, or I'm, I'm probably butchering that, but um, you, you, know, you know, that she's always sort of making that, those opportunities known and available. And then you've got that mentor network there too. They can they can help. So uh, LinkedIn, uh, I've said a lot about that already. But uh, you know the recruiters do reach out to you if you're engaging on LinkedIn. Uh, and then Gun.io, another plug for uh, for that as a way to search for not you know freelance opportunities, but also permanent positions as well. Uh, and there are many other sites out there. These are some that I found. The Gun.io one is one that I found to be really pretty good. So. Uh, and then uh, I think that was it. Um, I went way longer than I thought I would. I apologize, but please uh, jump in with questions. Thanks, Chris. Now I think all that information was ooh, so good. Um, trying to scroll up to see if that's a question there. Oh. oh, perfect. Yes, I know, Sam. Um, and actually, I'll give you like a... a you want to jump on for maybe one or two minutes while we get any questions that we may have thrown into the chat. We'd love to um, let you talk a little bit about Create Opportunity um, for a couple seconds. Yeah, absolutely, happy to do that. Um, thank you for letting us jump in here. Um, we're a uh, six month training program that's hosted through Midlands Technical College. Um, you start off taking a screening that's online and linked here. Um, 
which after successfully passing that screening, you would then go into Midlands Technical College for a six month training. Um, from there, we'll pair you with local employers in the Columbia area um, for a two year apprenticeship program, which is really an extension of the classroom. Um, and from there, you're a full stack software engineer certified and um, ready to join the workforce. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that resource as well, Sam um, and Chris, adding on to um, what I'm sure is everyone's thoughts, just a, a big um, thank you for this information, as well as jumping on with us today. It looks like we have another question or a question in, do you have any specific resources um, helping veterans figure out how to translate job categories from military speak into civilian speak. And I think that's so funny because I noted when you were talking, you called it the briefing and I have been calling it, um, I don't know, the talk, the session or whatever. So that's probably super, super relevant. So would love your thoughts on that. Yeah, great question. And I'm sorry, I, I actually don't, uh, other than that was definitely one of the services that I knew uh, that Google VetNet was providing as well. Uh, so if you do go back to that brief and you hit some of the, um, uh, if, if you hit that top link that was the, um, this past year's Google VetNet, uh, all those sessions have been recorded and are available for you to go check out. So I know there is one that's like a military speak sort of thing. Uh, and then, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, hitting up the SC Codes community too. Uh, and, and I'm... I'm a mentor there. I'm happy to happy to help with that as well, for sure. Um, it's um, yeah, you know, all industries have their own jargon, but but now you've got to you've got to get out of one jargon, you know, that the military stuff and 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 really get it into uh, sort of software or or technical speak. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And I, I had one question, um, and I think I might have seen that in um, one of our registering or questions from the registrant form. Um, can you speak specifically about any challenges that may be specific to the military community when transitioning from um, a military career to a, a tech career? Mm. Specific to the military. Um, yeah, I think, yes. Um, yeah. I think that you coming out of a very structured environment of the military, you often just know that uh, when a an order or a direction is given, that that people are gonna are going to generally do that. Um, that is, uh, and so this isn't so much that versus uh, software. I think it's really that versus uh, the civilian workplace. Um, you, you know, there there can definitely be like, hey, I. Folks who, you know, maybe just flat out tell you they're not going to do that, or they'll quietly nod their nod their head, but they think it's the it's not a great idea, so they're not going to, going to do it. Um, so you, you really you you have to exert leadership that's not just a command driven sort of thing, like I'm giving a command and it's going to be followed. Um, there, you know, most people kind of want to know why, and and uh, I, I, we always do too, right? Like even in the military, you're given an order, but you kind of want to know that it's a sensical order. Um, so, uh, so that that's one thing to sort of be um, be alert to. Uh, definitely, it can be a different sort of. Uh, it's a much more casual environment, um, and that has that has a. Uh, I've seen that really transition, and I've seen myself transition and get more comfortable with that uh, over the years. Um, you know, I would have never thought about going into uh, into the office in a t-shirt. Um, I remember the first time I was at an office in uh, Dallas, Texas, uh, and it was a software development office. And you know, I was former former military. There are lots of folks that worked there that were, but then we also had uh, our business partner was based in California. And gosh, this was this was still a long time ago, though. This was uh, to, uh, it's probably 1999 or something like that. And uh, I remember some of the Californians like just walking around the office with no shoes on. So um, you know, that's that's pretty that's pretty likely in some of these offices when you go into the office now, right? Now post COVID and and you know, sort of the, the nature of remote work, we're almost always uh, you know from home or, or or often from home. So yeah. That that's awesome. a transition. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, 
again, thank you so much for hopping on with us. I see some great info, great info um, coming from people viewing. So I really, really appreciate you taking the time out to share with us, Chris, and hope that you'll be back to kind of continue on the series and help support um, military personnel, um, either through live chats, but definitely in our Slack channel, like like you mentioned, come over there, chat with us a little bit, and you can definitely get some additional resources and support. Um, if you are watching this video later, please feel free to throw any questions on the Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube post, and we will be sure to get those questions answered for you or direct you to someone who can. Um, thank you again, Chris. Thank you to everyone who joined. And please, we want to see you um, throughout the SC Codes community. So join us on Slack, keep up with our events, our events page, um, and we look forward to seeing you there. Thanks, Maria. Thank you, everyone, and thank you again for your service. Thank you.